My name is Benjamin Bailey, ex-Formula 2 driver, uh, race winner in Formula 2, European champion in Formula 4. And today uh, I'm here to help you at home also to uh, get better at, uh, at driving and use my experience I have in Formula cars, GT, uh, prototype to, uh, to make you gain some, uh, some lap time and enjoy the, the, the sim racing like, uh, like we all do today. So we've been talking on the sim uh, about the trail braking slash two-step braking like you hear it in the, in the sim world uh, and now I'm going to try to represent uh, for you some different types of braking. First we're going to go with the, with the most typical uh, way of braking that means for the ones who are actually going to analyze data and wants to, to, to really improve their performance with the different uh, data system that is available uh, online. Uh, after they've done a couple of laps and if they want to improve and if they want to, uh, to look and understand uh, the data because sometimes you look and you see all those lines going up and down and you think okay this is braking yes this is uh, speed but how to understand those lines and how to, how to use it at your own advantage and how to use it to, to give you uh, a gain in performance so that's what we're going to go through. Uh, I have taken two, uh, two Sharpie, one uh, one red to represent the brake and one green to represent the throttle. And first we're going to focus on the, on the brake. So when I draw here, that represents zero brake. So that is when you're off the brake, you're actually on the throttle. I can put the throttle line. This is zero. I'm going to put zero in red. And this is 100%. That means you're 100% on throttle. So you come on the straight. This is a straight line, obviously, you're 100% on the brake, 100% on, on, the, on, the, on the throttle, 0% on the brake. And then you're going to approach the braking zone, so the 100 uh, marker, the start of the curb, you know, the braking reference that we talked about earlier. And here you're going to try to apply as maximum pressure, as fast as possible, Depending on the car you're driving for, if uh, you're driving with, if it's a Formula 1, you can apply a lot of braking pressure. If it's GT3, maybe you're going to put a little bit less braking pressure. If it's Mazda MX MX5, a li little bit less again. So you try to find how much you can apply depending on the car you're driving for before you start locking up the brakes. And this is the first step. So we talked about the two-step uh, braking. This is the first step. Second step is the way you're going to release the brake. So you slowly release the brake until you reach zero. You're never going to see a perfect straight line. It's, otherwise, you're a robot. You're not a human. <laughs> so uh, you will see a little bit of bumps. It goes a little bit up, a little bit down. But you have to try to look like for the perfect uh, shark fin, we call it in, in motorsport. So a very sharp angle, 90 degrees angle here, up to the maximum pressure, and then the second step, the release. One thing that is very important that you need to look for is the way you release the throttle. Because braking very hard, braking very fast is one thing, but also releasing the throttle. So you want to see the throttle release as fast as possible, but one thing, the throttle needs to finish before you start braking. Often, the common mistake is you are releasing the the throttle and you have some crossing here. This crossing will cause the car to not slow down efficiently. It might cause some front lockup. It will cause a lot of problems. So the first thing you need to look when you analyze the data is am I quick enough in my release and am I quick enough in my braking pressure, my attack, you can call it. And then when this is done, you have seen that, you are happy with the, with the way you are braking. How am I releasing the brake? Am I releasing quick enough? Am I re releasing too slow? You have to have something that looks like a, like a shark fin. Next thing, you're done with the braking. You are approaching your corner. You are getting to the apex. You need to apply the power again. One thing you don't want to see, same. You want to avoid picking up the power too early and have crossing here. Because if you do this, same, you're going to create some small issue, you're going to cr create a little bit of pushing, uh, you're going to have, the car is going to feel a little bit unstable. So you want to avoid this, you want to be patient. You want to let the car 
rotate, let the car get through the corner, and then apply the power. Look, get this off. Finish your brake. Let the car rotate to the corner and apply the power back to 100% as fast as possible, depending on the car. If you have a lot of grip, you can be very fast. You can even be oh, like this. It depends a bit how you want. If you pick up the power too early, you're going to get understeer. If you pick up too late, you're just going to be slow on exit. So this is basically the perfect, uh, perfect braking technique. So now we've explained everything on the, on the whiteboard, how to, how to brake properly, how to release properly, how to release the throttle. Let's get a little bit more into details with the product itself. So I'm going to start with the Invicta pedals, because these are the ones that we, uh, we've used while driving in the sim. There's two different things you can do on the Invicta. Uh, one thing you can do here in order to be comfortable with your, with your pedals, uh, because you can obviously change with the little wheels in the back, you can change the angle of the pedal, depending if your sim, uh, some of the sim, you might not be able to change the platform where the, where the pedal set is sitting. Some you can, some you cannot, but anyway, you also have the choice to lose that wheels, take this clip off, and then you can screw in, unscrew out to change the angle of the pedals. Let's not get too much into detail with that. But you also have, make sure this one is tight, you also have a little screw in the front, and this is the stiffness I talked about, will always be the same obviously, but the play. So when this is completely loose, you have a little bit of play. With the Invicta pedals, you always never have much play, but this, I like to have it just a little, so it moves a little bit. So you will tie the main screw, and then I have a little, little bit, tie the other screw, and then I'm happy. Nothing more you need to do, as long as you're comfortable with the position, now it's good to go. And it's super, super hard. And like I said, with my hands, I cannot uh, even, even press it. Now moving to the Forte. I know I talked a lot in the video about how important it is and how good it is to have the pressure sensor. But the guys from Acetec, in my opinion, was able, were able to make a product that is super, super close to the pressure sensor with the system they have invented here with the elastomer. But one thing I want to explain to you quick is how to make sure you get the performance as close as the Invicta. So how to do that? Obviously, we talked about stiffness and play. So with the, with the Forte pedals, when this is loose and this is loose, obviously you see there's a little bit more play. So you want to get rid of that. So the way to get rid of that is with this one here. So you want to get this one all the way tight and you see now the play is gone, a little bit loose, just a little bit of play. Tight this one, and then I'm done. Super stiff, super precise, super close to the Invicta pedals, and you save a little bit of money. So if you don't have the budget for the Invicta, I would really advise to buy something like the Forte because it's extremely good, it's extremely close to the Invicta, thanks to the technology going into it and the stiffness of the pedal. And then you can also change the the, trot, uh, the pedal position the same way I did with the, with the Invicta previously. One thing that we need to talk about when it comes to uh, braking, and we didn't talk about it before, in order to have consistent braking and very effi efficient braking, you have to remember that you never brake with your ankle. So never try to brake only with your ankle. Now you have very good equipment, so to, use, to be able to use the, say, get the best of it and get consistent, use your legs when you need to press because then you will be able to put more force. With your ankle, you might never reach the maximum brake pressure if you drive, for example, the Formula One or whatever. So you will never lock up because you don't have enough force. And also your ankle would get tired, so you won't be able to, to be consistent. If you use your legs or you use your quadriceps, you'll be able to press a lot harder and a lot more consistent. So that is very, very important when you are using the brakes in the sim and in the real, in the real life. So lastly, what I like about the Aztec SimSport pedals, and I said it in the previous video, it's, it's the design. I mean, the design for me, it's really, really, 
really good, it looks amazing, it's very light. I mean, you can just take it, I can try with one finger. Super easy to, uh, to, uh, to lift. Uh, Mr. Andre Eriksson, I think, got a little inspired with the color. I'm not sure, but I'm 99% sure of it. Uh, and you can also play a little bit with the, with the LED light here. You can choose the color when they are, when they are turned on. Uh, if for the one that wants to play and, and the weight. I mean, it's super easy, super light. Four screws and then you set up. So you cannot make it much easier than that.